Welcome back to the Paper Stack Podcast. I'm Rick Allen. This is Brett Berkey. Rick A, Ready B. I just noticed right. that today. Um, we are so excited. We got another edition of my first note purchase. DJ Elojo, here you are. Thank you so much for joining us. It's cool to like get to do this in this way, but through, through uh, you know a podcast, video chat, because you know we get to see each other still too. We just saw you in November yeah. at the at the Node Expo and got to hang out and chitty chat and spend some time together. Oh man, it was a great time. It was a great time. And uh, it's always good seeing you guys. I will say I always love seeing the paper stack booth at conferences because you guys have the best merch ever. Uh, <laughs> my wife, my wife has tried to steal numerous paper stack shirts from oh, wow. my, uh, from, from, from my wardrobe. So I uh, appreciate you guys for uh, always bringing the quality. Oh yeah. It's just, you know what, give us your, uh, give us your address. We'll send you some merch. Yeah. <laughs> so, absolutely that's more um well today we're going to talk about you i want to talk about your first note purchase you know you're in the note space tell us about buying notes but before we dive into that first note purchase we always like to get like get the background from people unpack a little bit tell us you know you know tell us about dj where's he from how did how'd you wind up buying notes and and then dive into the first note no, awesome. Well, I am a real estate investor full time. And so I've been investing in real estate for about 15 years. And it started off while I was working another full time job. One of my buddies who said, Hey, you know, do you want to go to a foreclosure auction? And we end up going to the foreclosure auction here in Georgia. And the way they happen here in Georgia, they're always the first Tuesday of the month. And we went out to the courthouse steps and we just saw people buying houses. And I was like, hmm. This is pretty cool. Uh, I, I had a I had a little bit of money, and when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. I had like a credit card and like five thousand dollars, <laughs> and I said, "All right, we'll figure this out." And you know, fast forward fifteen years later, have done hundreds of deals, have purchased numerous properties, fix and flip. We own some rental properties, and got into the note space maybe about five years ago. And I got into it because instead of dealing with tenants and toilets, I said, "Let me also try to be the bank," and it's really been a fun journey and an interesting journey for sure do you uh do you buy mostly just in atl or do you go nationwide when you start up with your rentals and everything or yeah on on the residential side uh fix and flip we do pretty much all metro atlanta so 100 miles outside of atlanta in every direction mm -hmm. uh, as it pertains to notes, we don't buy anything in Georgia because we're not even licensed in Georgia, mm -hmm. but we do buy kind of in numerous states, the the good states, I like to say, the ones with quick foreclosure timelines or that are not arduous like uh, Hawaii or something like that. Right. That's cool. good. Yeah. Cool. So uh, how did you how did you first find out about notes? I mean, you know, I was there a podcast? Was there you reading something? Did you stumble across, you know? A conference or, you know, how did, how did you get into the world of notes? So I always heard about notes from the seller finance side where people always talk about like carrying paper and stuff like that. And again, I was, I was younger, I had less money and I just was like, uh, I'm not trying to carry anybody's paper. If I sell something, I want all my money right now. Right. So it wasn't a situation where I was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But what happened is, is that as time went on, I heard about the concept more. And then we actually uh, were trying to buy a property on the courthouse steps and it went back to the bank but it was a second mortgage. And so at the time, my business partner actually reached out to the second mortgage company and said, hey, would you mind selling us the property? And and I was like, hmm, that's just an interesting concept that like you can just reach out to those folks. It wasn't a huge bank. It wasn't like a Wells Fargo or Bank of America, but it was like a small little LLC, probably a couple members. Uh, and they said, hey, we'll sell you the we'll sell you the paper on it. And we end up buying that property, renovating it. Um, and and that's kind of what got the bug. And then I just started doing more due diligence and more research mm -hmm. and linked up with some folks in the note space and it just took off from there. Okay. So your first, your first note purchase was then directly from a bank. No. So that we actually ended up buying it as a Rio, right? Okay, because they got it. Rio, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it back at the foreclosure sale, but they were in second position. Um, so my first note purchase actually came after I got some education. So I didn't purchase anything until I got educated. Okay, perfect. Where did you, where'd you go to get educated? Was it Google university or did you get you know, paid for somebody? Or? <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I, I I got educated numerous places. Google was a good resource. Some of the stuff that you see online was really, really helpful in helping you understand the concept. Mm -hmm. But I, I linked up with Bill McCafferty oh, and 
I started learning a lot from Bill. So he had some training um, and I took his training and he's been kind of, he's become a real good friend and asset manager. And then I'm also a part of Rob Hytha's mastermind and some other folks mastermind. So that was really good. And Bill McCafferty kind of took me through my first few note experiences. Okay. Um, and I still work with him today on lots of stuff. And my first note was actually wasn't one note. It was actually three notes because I, typically purchase non-performing seconds. Okay. And the way I was educated was that you have to look at non-performing seconds, kind of like lottery tickets where, you know, if you buy three, yeah. <laughs> yep. if you, if you buy three, one's going to work out, you're going to lose money on one and you're going to do really, really good on one. And so I bought three notes at one time, and that was the start of my note investing career. <laughs> oh, cool! Tell us about the notes. Um, how did you how did you find them? Was it an email or? Yeah, so I found them through a relationship that Bill had, and it was actually a fund that was going that was at the end of their cycle, and so I was able to kind of buy some tails off a fund that was closing down. That's cool. And so I think I spent about $30,000 on three different second notes, Okay, uh, two, and they were all non-performing. All right. Two were in Pennsylvania and one was in North Carolina. Ooh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, I, hey, look, I want to get started, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what happened there is that the one of them in Pennsylvania we started legal and, and we did the demand letter, started legal, and that person ended up filing bankruptcy. And that person started bankruptcy and is actually still paying today. They're actually about to almost finish their kind of five year chapter thirteen. Nice. That's awesome. So so that that one worked out. Um, not a home run because, you know, with the servicing fees and bankruptcy, everything's more expensive and it's a low balance, low UPB loan. So there's not a lot of spread there, but it worked out. Right. Yeah. The next one was in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. The house was vacant. The borrowers were deceased. So we knew we were going to have to foreclose. And luckily for us, it ended up actually being a first position loan, not a second position Ooh. loan, because wow. I think the first was like past statute of limitations or something like that. And it just, you know, it just worked out. And so that was the best one out of the bunch because we took it through foreclosure, which took maybe about eight months or so. And we got it back uh, as a Rio and then we sold it. And I think we made probably, I don't know, $20,000 on that. So that kind of helped cover the cost for almost the entire portfolio that we bought. Wow. Nice. That's great. And the last one? The last one is another PA loan. And I regretfully say that I'm still dealing with that loan right now. Um, uh, we are, we have been in numerous kind of reconciliation or conciliation conferences back and forth. They've delayed, delayed and delayed. And that one, I have spent more in legal fees than is the U a collectible UPB on the note. Oh. So that one has been like a pain in the butt, but all in all, my first three notes, probably when you net them all together, together, I'll probably break even. Mm -hmm. But the lessons and the experiences were exceptional for helping me, you know, get over the hump of saying, let me buy my first note. Because in those first three notes, I've dealt with a ton of different difficult situations. Um, and it's been really beneficial. I would say, I mean, that's, that's, you, you really jumped into the deep end on that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like not only, not only non performing second, but, PA, you're like, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going for it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so yeah. what do you think? What's your opinion? H harder to make your first note purchase or go from 10 notes to 100 notes? I, I would say it's harder to make your first note purchase, mm -hmm. right? Because I've been doing about five years and I've probably done about 50 or so note transactions. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it and I think about my trajectory, I could scale up and buy more notes at any more, any time. Like if, if I had more revenue, I mean, if I had more income or uh, if I started a fund, I could go buy probably a hundred notes, but the, getting over the first, the inertia it takes to buy your first note yeah. is the, is the huge thing that is a differentiator for, for, for people. That's very true. That's the barrier, right? That's the barrier of entry. Some people just, yeah. they look at it and they go, I can't do it. 
I mean, I can't yeah. make myself pull the trigger on this. I, it, it's interesting because uh, when I got in the note space, I ended up going um, uh, like 18 months solo or, or whatever without any sort of education at all, which was not not the brightest thing. But I, I made it through it and just kind of figured it out. Um, but then got educated and went to note school and Eddie Speed. And we started going to conferences in 2016, 16, 16, 17, 17. 16, 17. I think it was 16. We went to 16. We, we had the yeah, registration page. We had the registration page. That's it. <laughs> we went there as, as oh, yeah. but we would talk to people at, at some of the conferences and, uh, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, you know, we've been a, a mentor student for, for four years now. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. How many notes have you guys purchased? They're like, we've got, we've not bought one yet. And I'm like, man what what's going on and there's just some people who they just can't make it and it's like you almost just have to take the leap of faith and if you can just make it around the track without losing money and even if you lose a little bit you learn so much more in your losses than you do in in your your victories and so it's just interesting like kudos to you for like just saying i'm only gonna do it once i'm gonna do it three times i'm gonna buy three of them at once Let's see how it goes. And not only that, it's the, the yeah. most people would buy a performing note. I'm going to buy a performing note not that me. has the good pay history, <laughs> non-performing seconds. And, not yeah. me. I bought performing. I bought non-performing. I didn't buy a performing loan until four years into the business. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, I think some of the things that help me when I think about the process mm -hmm. is that, one, I had good mentors, right? Mm -hmm. So That's having true. that education is huge. Number two is I was already familiar with real estate as an asset class yes. and I'm used to like, you know, betting on flips. And so, you know, my risk tolerance is a little bit higher. Yes. But the other thing, and I think that will help most people is that, you know, I bought loans that had UPBs that were not very high. And so for me, spending, you know, $10,000 on like a $15,000 UPB, you know, I knew that, yes, I may not make a ton of money off of this and I may actually lose money, but the $10,000 was, was not my biggest concern. Uh, Cause I figured I can at least protect my principal if, even if things went bad. Yeah. And you knew if you get the house back, you're like, Hey, it's business as usual. I know exactly what to do if I get that prop property back. It's just, let's go. Absolutely. Yeah. That's Absolutely. how it was. That's, so. I, that's, I find that people who make that jump, from real estate into note investing, they usually have a much higher risk tolerance and it's not uncommon for them to say, I'm buying a non-performing loan because I mean, I was buying and selling real estate and investing in real estate all through from 2008 to 2012 when I got into notes. And so it was just, I, you want to talk about used to risk. You're buying <laughs> So it was the same thing. Like, man, what if we could just be the bank? I remember saying that with, with my partner, TJ, like, what if we could just become the bank and control all these things? And then it just kind of happened. So yeah, I find that that if you're in the real estate space, you know what to do with the asset when you get it back. So it makes it much easier to buy a non-performing loan. Did, did you sell your, uh, your pool of rentals? Or you still own all that? No, nah, man, we still own a rentals and, and we still are heavy in the day to day uh, investment game of real estate. So we still do numerous fix and flip properties every year. We still buy rentals and I probably will always continue to do that. But notes is that perfect thing that balances out. You know, I love notes because it's the part of real estate for us that's truly passive, right? Everything else is passive enough, but the notes is really passive, especially when they become performing. It's like, you really are just collecting a check, mm -hmm. but the other parts of real estate kind of helped me keep, keep my lights on. So that's uh, you know, who has that method of investing is for Quan. Uh, he has a book called hybrid investing and he talks about the, the different ones where each, each method kind of protects the other, where you have you some rentals some fix and flips and notes. And he has, a, he pulls them together and he called it the hybrid approach. I thought it was really smart. It, method it of what he's doing yeah, yeah it's, it's it super sense. smart you gotta have i mean i love notes too it is passive but i also the real estate side um you know understanding the uh, the appreciation that goes with real estate versus arguably if you buy a note mm -hmm. <laughs> it's losing it, you know it's losing value every time that they do they do Absolutely. a good thing and make their payment you're like well yeah. They made a payment. It's worth less today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, the way I look at it is that I, I'm not smart enough to start a cool, um, tech company that, you know, sells notes and stuff like that. So I, you know, I can swing a hammer pretty good and I can tie a bow tie. So I'm just going to stay in my lane for right now. Right. <laughs> One of the sharpest <laughs> people I've ever met. Right yeah, I know. So, yeah. so, I don't think I can, I don't, I can't even do that. 
Hey, man, don't worry. Next time I see you, I'll teach you. We'll tie one on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, cool. So if if you had some advice, right? So you're um, you're still doing a, you're buying. You said you've done. You've bought your first note. You've done. You've purchased over fifty notes now. Still doing the fix and flip stuff, buying rentals. If somebody's making the move and they're like, I'm interested in notes, and DJ's got some advice for them, what is it? If you do good due diligence, you will pretty much always make money investing in notes. Mm -hmm. You just don't know how much and you just don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's true. That's so. it. That's 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 good. And it, that's that sums it up really. It does. I like that. Yeah. Um, you've pretty th you've thought about that before, huh? Well, I'm saying that's that's the way because like I had to get my wife on board with investing in notes, and we do a lot of this in like our retirement accounts, our self directed retirement accounts, mm -hmm. and she's like super conservative. Like she'll just go put her money in like a four or five percent CD and just be like, "Hey, let me let it sit there." I'm like, "No, I can't do that." Mm -hmm. And so, I, in in my process of getting her on board and kind of educating her, you know, that's one of the things I tell her. Like, look, you're gonna make money on it. This is you know, but you just don't know how much and you just don't know when. But it's gonna be more than what the bank is giving you. So let's go down this road. You'll learn a lot. And have a good time doing it and you'll meet some pretty cool people that's cool yeah that that's is cool. that is awesome so i guess next wednesday you're dropping a book huh yep 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 so my new book uh entitled the foreclosure fix 12 steps to beat the bank escape foreclosure and turn your property into a profitable asset comes out on february 7th so super excited about it it's been a labor of love and as i told you i started investing at the courthouse steps buying houses that were in foreclosure and through that process and over the years of investing and now being on this side with notes, I've learned just a ton of tips, tricks, and strategies to help mm -hmm. homeowners who are facing foreclosure. So we know on the note side, you always get those people who are delinquent um, on their notes and their non-performing notes, but they have tons of equity. They have tons of options, but the longer they wait, the more they let the legal clock, uh, uh, the legal bill kind of increase and the, and the closer it gets to the foreclosure timeline, the less options they have. And so the book is really a guide for homeowners who really want to understand what to do, how to escape foreclosure, how to get to a better position and how to regain control of their financial situation. Um, so if you are a lender out there and you're like, hey, my borrower won't communicate with me, just uh, mail them a copy of the book via Amazon and see if, see if they respond to you pretty quickly. That's, pretty Man, that's actually a really smart <laughs> idea. I can't, can't wait to read it just because... I was sitting here thinking, I'm like, man, is he really telling borrowers how to, you know, drag things out? And I was like, no, he's probably really just trying to say, look, let's, let's, look, there's ways to have win win situations in, in really bad situations. Yeah, DJ, I, I already see a great marketing strategy for you for other note investors, if that's the case, because we've always talked about it like, no one not opens an Amazon package. So yeah. if, you, if you get like, you know, if you're trying to get a hold of a, a bar and they're not uh, looking at the letters, you get an Amazon package and they're like, oh, what, what is this? And the book magically says how to <laughs> beat bankrupt or foreclosure. And you're like, what? who said this? And, you know, and then that's, I mean, yeah, you, you might do well with that, like marketing to other lenders because that's the, the foot in the door that other people can't get. That's yeah. pretty smart. Yeah, great stuff. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the opportunity to be on the podcast. And uh, one of the things I like to say, too, about you guys is that for those folks who haven't done a transaction on the Paperstack site, um, it is a cool site to do a transaction on. I have done a transaction on there and I actually had a hiccup with my transaction. And this is before. I knew these two guys, but one of them reached out to me and said, hey, let me help you get this solved. So I really appreciate that. And uh, it's, a, it's a good platform. And I think what you guys are doing to help bring lay people to the note space is, is really, really cool and exciting. That's awesome. Thank you so, much. Man. Thank you. so people want to get in touch with you just to say hi, just to, you know, I know you got a podcast and everything like that. Where, where do they find you? How do they get in touch with you? The best place to find me is www.theforeclosurefix.com, or you can check me on all socials at DJ underscore Alojo. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all those places. So super accessible. I'm a small time guy, so not no big flashy guy. So just holler at me. That's it, man. That's Sounds us. Good. That's just kind of how Brad and I are too. Just. Mm -hmm. 
come talk to us if you see us. So, yeah. hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, great stuff. Great story. Love what you're doing. Um, it's cool to hear your background and cool to hear what you're doing right now. And yeah. That's, best of luck on Wednesday. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all. And uh, I definitely I'll see you at a conference soon. So thank you so much. Yep. yep. That's it for this edition of the Paper Stack Podcast. DJ Alojo on here. My first note purchase. We will catch you on the flip side on the next one. See ya. Bye.